I'm here with unbeaten amateur MMA fighter Jer Harris uh, out of Ireland. How are you? Uh, good, man. Good, yeah. Yep. I'm doing great. Thank you for coming on the show. I guess to begin, uh, just tell me, uh, how did you get your start in MMA? Uh, started, started when I was 11. One of my mates got into it and thought it was kickboxing. And he asked me to come up with him, so I ended up just joining with him. But it was good then, I ended up getting into the grappling part and joining us. Which is your favorite, stand-up or grappling? Because you've been able to finish uh, fights, kind of both. Uh, to be honest, I prefer the striking part of the book. Yeah, like, you have to keep up with the jiu-jitsu as well, you know? For sure, for sure. Well, talking about striking, uh, you've been dominant so far uh, in your amateur career. I saw your win on June 2nd. Uh, that was for Cage Warriors uh, Academy Northwest. Yeah. How did it feel to get that knockout win? Because you hit him with the head kick, then you followed up with some crazy shots. Those uppercuts were insane. Yeah, no, I was going to get a knockout finish. So it was, uh, once I landed the kick, I saw a nail. I had him there. Then I landed a couple of uppercuts and so on a couple of combos after that. I was delighted to get the the knockout, you know. Yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, after getting the two, the two, uh, the two submissions, mm. just go to get the knockout in. You can finish it anywhere, you know. Of course, anything can happen in the cage. Anything. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Now, d did you see the fight ending uh, by knockout? Like, did you kind of prepare to see a knockout? Because as you had mentioned, your first two fights ended by submission. To be honest, I, I'm just ready to finish it anywhere it goes. It doesn't really bother me what way it goes. Like, if, it, if he stays on the feet, I'll finish him on the feet. And if they want to go to the ground, that's the way it will go. I, I've been able to see a couple of your fights, and you are a very well-rounded uh, fighter. So what is your best uh, aspect? I'd say my boxing's pretty sharp. I'd say my boxing's my best aspect of me, of me game altogether. Talking about boxing, uh, obviously... Conor McGregor, Floyd Mayweather, <laughs> we, we saw that uh, match in uh, boxing, obviously. Um, what were your thoughts on that whole uh, ordeal? What were your thoughts on that fight? I uh, just has to take as it was. Like, it's just that it's a money fight. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's what it was for. But it's a it's great expedition to show, like, like people who do boxing coming into MMA or vice versa, you know what I mean? MMA fighters going into boxing, you'd see that a lot more than the other way around. But... Right. <laughs> But uh, it's good to see her at that such a high level, like all together, like McGregor and Mayweather. You're not gonna get two better fighters on the feet, like. But obviously Mayweather is a different level altogether. So. Yeah. Do you think that we'll see more uh, MMA fighters going over to boxing in the near future, and vice versa? Do you think that's uh, something we'll yeah, see? Yeah, sure. Would like, Jevor, uh, if you've ever heard of Jack McGann, Jack McGann recently moved out to boxing for a. Uh, for a boxing match and a uh, one boy knockout, I think was the second round or something. And then uh, Michael Venom Page, I think, moved over for a fight as well. Yeah. Two, yep. two brilliant strikers. Like so, it's if you get, I, I find if you move over from MMA, you have more. You have like, you have more angles. It's different ways of striking. Where boxers who box with boxers, they all know the patterns where MMA brings different angles all together completely so I think when MMA fighters they go into boxing they find much more success with that striking because yeah. they're not worried about kicks and everything else Right. so I think like if MMA fighters are getting into boxing you'll see a lot of people moving on in like, especially for the money as well Would you ever consider uh, making your way to the boxing ring professionally? Uh, definitely Yeah. Let's get a few MMA fights under the belt and see what happens first yeah, for sure, for sure. But, I mean, I totally agree with what you had said. It, I mean, it's definitely interesting to see how this is, because it originally started with James Tony coming over to MMA against Randy Couture, and that was a awful idea. Like, that was one of the worst fights I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> but, but then, obviously, with McGregor going over to, to boxing and fighting, you know, probably the best boxer uh, of all time, that's definitely, yeah. pretty incredible. I, I would definitely love to see more uh, yeah. MMA Last fights going over. Last 10 rounds, that's another thing altogether. I know what I mean? It shows how good he was. Yeah, of course. I mean, obviously, obviously, it's different sized gloves, but if, I mean, for Conor McGregor going over to boxing and fighting the best boxer and, and doing a pretty good job at it is incredible, but I think we can both agree, and any knowledgeable fan would know that if Mayweather were to come over to MMA, he would not uh, last more than, uh, I don't know, maybe like a minute? Or he'd be crippled. He'd be crippled inside a minute. He'd yeah. be destroyed. He wouldn't be able to stand up on two legs. <laughs> he like Bambi on ice, he will be. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree. He would be taken down. He'd be submitted. But I, I don't know. It would definitely be cool to see more of these crossover uh, athletes. But at the same time, they are two different, completely different sports, really. Yeah, completely. Yeah. Well, uh, Jer, for you, obviously, you're coming off that win early June. Do you have a timeline for your next uh, fight? Uh, hopefully September or August, because I'm going away now soon. So I'm not going to get that name before I go away in July. So I'll get something after that. Hopefully, I think it's a... Uh, it's up in Belfast on Cage Warriors again, or uh, it could be in September and on Cage Legacy. It's another good Irish card. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone maybe on your radar? Is there anyone that you'd maybe you know like to fight? I don't really look into anybody to be honest. I just fight who wants to fight. Like, yeah, like I wouldn't really look into other fighters. I don't look up any other fighters. I just keep to me own and watch me own game. Now, for you, this is different for, obviously, every different fighter, uh, you know, their mentality. How do you get yourself ready? This could be any competition, MMA, kickboxing, BJJ, but how do you get yourself mentally or uh, physically prepared? Do you have, like, a ritual that you kind of do? Not really. Like, I just constantly training in the gym, like, especially with the lads I'm training with, the likes of Ryan Cortis, Scott Harvey. Uh, Ian Clarity, the, every all the lads in the club are beasts. There's Clinton Scott, major wrestler. There's Danny Hall. All the lads in our gym are seriously high strikers and grapplers. So they already have you ready for any type of fight at all times. So you shouldn't be worried about anything. Like I feel you should be ready for all. Yeah. Walk me through a typical train day for you, especially you know when you're in a fight camp. Well, it depends, like, because I walk, so I walk from half seven till quarter to four, so, and then I'll go home, we'll get me, get me dinner, get me filled, get going to train, and on the Tuesday, it's normally striking, and then jiu-jitsu, and then Wednesdays is wrestling, then Thursdays, it's jiu-jitsu, then MMA, and then if I'm not in work, you can train in the mornings, there's jits on a Monday mornings, and sparring on Wednesdays and Fridays. You have a and really, then, you have a really busy get, schedule. <laughs> yeah, get up with the lads on Saturday mornings if we can, as many of the boys as possible. Yeah. It's also good to get in. I did jujitsu for about uh, probably like two months. I did a boxing class for about twenty minutes because it was a free membership, and I was so yeah. bad. Like your training schedule, I have no idea how fighters are able to do it because I did it for like combined two weeks, and I couldn't feel my arms for like two years. Yeah, and no, now you get used to it after a while. Like the first time I went into boxing clubs, like yeah, using completely different muscles than anywhere else, and it feels like your arms are too big. Water balloons, you can't lift them. Like, <laughs> know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, now, like, when I, I've always, I've always done sport, I've always, I've always been athletic, so I've never felt that anything like physically. It's really draining. Like when you're constantly training, you don't feel it. Like, the more you train, the less injuries you get as well. Huh. That's interesting. We feel it's constantly conditioning itself. Gotcha. Because if you get used to taking small injuries and just brushing them off, you don't get as injured as much because, like, if, you, if, you're taking, if you're getting small injuries and you're taking a week or two off of them, you'll just get used to doing that and you'll be constantly injured. Hmm. Whereas if you get a small injury and you just push through it, it's not as bad as you fucking think, like. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, I mean, for you, Jer, what is your favorite part about being a mixed martial artist? Well, just just the whole aspect of the competition part of it. Just being like, once you step into it, once you step into the cage, it's only you and one other person. Like one of you has to step out and win an ornament, or if it's unlucky, you get a draw. But like, like it's just it's pure competition. Like it's one on one. It's there's. Like not not much padding. There's you have your gum shield and your gloves, and then depend if it if you're fighting in in Ireland now, you have to wear the shin pads, and uh, in the Europeans, you have to wear the shin pads when you're fighting. And but over in England and up the north, you don't have to wear them. We find that's a lot better for grappling as well, especially in MMA, because the shin pads get caught up and and stuff like that, and you don't really need them. Uh, Jared, the floor is yours. Uh, anyone you'd like to thank, team, family, uh, and how can people find you on social media? Uh, you can find me on uh, Instagram uh, at Jared Harris, and then uh, fa fa I don't have a Facebook page. Like I have a Facebook page, but haven't got like a, a fan page or anything like that. 
But if you're looking for me, yeah, all my fights do be posted on Instagram uh, at Jerry Harris. And I just big thanks to uh, like my coach, Arm Roddy, all the lads I train with. And uh, just I'm starting to get got a sponsor off uh, RDX. I only got them on and uh, Brew Force Nutrition in Ballymun. Got the, they're my sponsor as well. And uh, just all my family for supporting me through all my fights and all, you know.